And now today we're going to be talking about how to play our first scale. So what is a scale? Basically a scale is all of the notes in a key. So we talked about the key of C being all white keys. There are no black keys in the key of C. So our C scale is basically going to be all white keys. So that's our scale. Now we can play a one octave scale, which is from C to the next C, or we can play a two octave scale. And that covers a whole two octaves. So one octave is from C to C, and then this is the other octave. When I was in college, I had to learn four octave scales. So those, those go for four octaves instead of just one or two. So today we're going to be learning the C scale we're going to start by learning it hands separately and then hands together. So before we do that, I want to show you what it's going to look like when we, um, when we finish learning our C scale. So I want to play for you what it's going to sound like at the end of this lesson. Scale. We're going to learn two octave scales, both hands, hands together. All right, so let's get started. We're going to start with the right hand, and I'm actually going to move it up here. We're going to start playing here. So we're going to start with the right hand, and we're going to start not by playing our notes individually, but we're going to start by doing what we call blocking. So blocking means we're going to uh, play multiple notes together so that we can get the hand position um, worked out. So the first three notes we're going to play together are C, D, E, and we're going to play that with fingers one, two, and three, just like this, one, two, three. Now let me zoom up a little bit so you can see my keyboard and you can see my hand position as well. Okay, so fingers one, two, three are playing C, D, E. That's our first block. Now our second block is going to be F, G, A, B. And we're going to use fingers one, two, three, four to play F, G, A, B. Just like this. All right, next we're going to move up and do the same thing we just did. So one, two, three on C, D, E. And then one, two, three, four on F, G, A, B. And then we're, we're going to use our pinky finger, finger five, and play the C. All right, let's do that again. So we're going to block it starting at the bottom, C, D, E on fingers one, two, three. And then one, two, three, four, on F, G, A, B. And then we repeat that. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. And five. Okay, one more time. Starting at the bottom. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. And five. Okay, now we've blocked those, and the purpose of blocking is to remember where our, um, what fingers play what notes. For example, you know, because we blocked it, you know that finger one, the thumb, always plays the C, and it always plays the F. So you know when we get to the C and the F, that's going to be finger one. So blocking just helps you to solidify the fingering. Okay, so now we're going to play it broken. So broken means playing the notes individually. Okay, so we're going to start with C. So we're going to play um, finger one, C, D, E. And now, if you'll remember from when we blocked it, we have to have finger one, our thumb, playing the F. So how do we get finger one over there? The way we do that is super simple. We just cross under, we cross our thumb under. Okay, you can see my what I'm doing here. We're just crossing the thumb under. Now I want you to practice that, so hold that E down, just like, we, just like we did, and then practice crossing that thumb under. Now I want you to watch your elbow, because what I don't want to see is I don't want to see your elbow doing this to get your thumb under. There's no reason for the elbow to be moving at all. So the elbow can stay right where it is, and just the thumb is moving underneath, okay? So let's move our thumb under and play that F. Here we go, F. And let's keep going, G, A, B, and here we go again, we know our thumb has to play that C. So again, no elbow movement, we don't need that. All we need is for this thumb to move under and play that C. 
Okay, let's keep going. D, E, look, our thumb has to move under again to play F, G, A, B, C. That's our first scale, so let's do that again. Start at the bottom. We're starting with C, and ready, go. C, D, E, thumb under, no elbow movement. F, G, A, B, thumb under, C, D, E, thumb under, F, G, A, B, C. All right, same thing again, setting at the bottom, ready, go. C, D, E, thumb under, F, G, A, B, thumb under, C, D, E, thumb under, F, G, A, B, C. And let's do that one more time. Ready, go. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Perfect. So that's our right hand, two octave C scale, ascending. Now we're going to learn the same thing going down, so descending. So to start learning the scale descending, we're going to start at the top and we're going to block it. So we're going to block by going um, finger five on C. And then four, three, two, one. So these are basically the same blocks that we did ascending. We're doing them descending. So four, three, two, one. Then three, two, one. Four, three, two, one. Three, two, one. Same thing again. Ready? Go. So five. Four, three, two, one. Three, two, one. Four, three, two, one. Three, two, one. And one more time. Five. Four, three, two, one. Three, two, one. Four, three, two, one. Three, two, one. And now we get to play it broken, so not blocked. So we're starting, starting at the top and playing one note at a time. So we start with the top and we go C. So finger five, four, three, two, one. And now we have a problem because we have to cross over. So you'll remember from when we blocked it that we always have finger three playing the E here. So we need finger three to cross over. So what we're going to do is just nicely cross over. Again, we don't need a whole bunch of elbow movement here. We don't need this. All we want is just for our hand to slightly turn so we can reach our three. And let's keep going. Two, one. Oh, now we have to cross over again. So you'll remember from when we blocked it that finger four always played the B here. So we're going to cross over, just turn your hand to reach finger four, three, two, one, cross over into three, two, one. Same thing again, starting at the top. Ready, go. Five, four, three, two, one, cross over into three, two, one, cross over into four, three, two, one, cross over into three, two, one. And same thing, one more time. Ready, go. Five, four, Three, two, one, cross over onto three, two, one, cross over onto four, three, two, one, cross over onto three, two, one. And let's do it just one more time. Ready, go. Five, four, three, two, one, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, three, two. All right, now the challenge is can we put it hands, can we do just the right hand, ascending and descending? So let's try it. Ready? Starting at the bottom, ready, go. One, two, three, cross under. One, two, three, four, cross under. One, two, three, cross under. One, two, three, four, five. Now we go down, four, three, Two, one, cross over, three, two, one, cross over, four, three, two, one, cross over, three, two, one. Yay, we did it! Let's do the same thing again. Ready? Go. One, two, three, cross under, one, 
two, three, four, cross under, one, two, three, cross under, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, cross over, three, two, one, cross over, four, three, two, one, cross over, three, two, one. Yes, we did it. So that is the uh, C scale in the right hand ascending and descending. Now, I would recommend that you pause the video here and practice that for probably a week before you move on to the left hand. But for the sake of our video here, and because we're talking about um, scales all in one video, I'm going to introduce the left hand as well, and then we'll talk about putting hands together. So once you have mastered the right hand, ascending and descending, just as we did, then it's time to learn the left hand. Now, by now, you're a pro at blocking and all of that, so the left hand should be somewhat easier. So let's go back to our keyboard. And we're going to start with the left hand and we're going to block it. So I'm actually going to start right here. I think that should work for, for us. Okay, so we're going to start by blocking our left hand so we understand the finger. So we'll start with finger five. And then four, three, two, one. Um, that's on D, E, F, and G. And then three, two, one on A, B, C. Okay, let's do that part again. That part can be a little confusing. So finger five, four, three, two, one. And then three, two, one on A, B, C. Let's keep going. Now we have four, three, two, one on D, E, F, and G. And three, two, one. Let's do that again. Start at the bottom, finger five. Four, three, two, one. Three, two, one. Four, three, two, one. Three, two, one. One more time, start at the bottom, five. Four, three, two, one. Three, two, one. Four, three, two, one. Three, two, one. Now let's play that broken or with the notes separately. So starting at the bottom, starting with five, four, three, two, one. Cross over onto three. Again, we're crossing over here, no elbow movement. Just turn your hand to cross over. Three, two, one. Now we have to cross over onto four. Same thing. Turn your hand to cross over onto finger four. Three, two, one. Cross over onto three, two, one. And let's start at the bottom. Do the same thing again. Ready? Go. Five, four, three, two, one. Cross over. Three, two, one. Cross over. Four, three, two, one. Cross over. Three, two, one. One more time. Start at the bottom. Ready? Go. Five, four, three, two, one. Cross over. Three, two, one. Cross over. Four, three, two, one. Cross over. Three, two, one. That is the left hand C scale ascending. Now let's learn it descending. So we're going to start at the top, which is right here. So we're actually starting an octave above middle C. And we're going to start by blocking it. So we're going to play fingers one, two, three. On um, C, B, and A. And then one, two, three, four. On G, F, E, and D. And then fingers one, two, three. One, two, three, four and finger five. Starting at the top, same thing again. We're going to block, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. And five. And one more time, start at the top. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, and five. Now it's time to play it broken. So let's start at the top. 
I'm going to start with finger, finger one, two, three, and now you'll remember finger one has to play this G here. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to slide under, just like we did in the right hand when we slid, when we slid our thumb under. You can see what I did here. So it's going to look the same in the left hand. So we started at the top, and when we get to the G, our thumb is just going to slide under. No elbow movement like this, just the thumb sliding under. So the thumb slides under onto G, and finger two, three, four, same thing. The thumb slides under onto C. Two, three, thumb under, one, two, three, four, five. Again, we're going to start at the top. Ready, go. One, two, three, thumb under, one, two, three, four, thumb under, one, two, three, thumb under, one, two, three, four, five. And one more time, start at the top. Ready, go. One, two, three, thumb under, one, two, three, four, thumb under, one, two, three, thumb under, one, two, three, four, five. Now we get to put the left hand together, ascending and descending. So let's start at the bottom and ready, go. One, sorry, then we'll start with five. Ready, go. Five, four, three, two, one, cross over, three, two, one, cross over, four, three, two, one, cross over, three, two, one. Now we're descending, two, three, cross under, one, two, three, four, cross under, one, two, three, cross under, one, two, three, four, five. Same thing, one more time. Ready, go. Five, four, three, two, one, cross over, three, two, one, cross over, four, three, two, one, cross over, three, two, one, two, three, cross under, one, two, three, four, cross under, one, two, three, cross under, one, two, three, four. So that is the C scale in the left hand, ascending and descending. So at this point, we've learned the right hand, ascending and descending, and the left hand, ascending and descending. So when I teach this in lessons, I usually have my students practice the right hand for a week until they have mastered that. And then at the next lesson, we introduce the left hand. And then at the lesson after that, then we start putting hands together. So that gives you a little bit of a time frame as to what you might expect. So don't expect yourself to be able to play hands together on the first day, certainly not. This is going to take time and skill and practice. And the more you practice the scales, the, um, the fingering will start to get in your muscle memory. And so you'll get a lot faster at it. All right, now let's talk about how we would actually put hands together. So this is always fun. I enjoy this part. So for hands together, we're going to start on C. All right, and what we're going to do is some people, when they practice hands together, they just start practicing until, until they make a mistake and then they keep practicing and trying to work out their mistakes. So the way I'm going to teach you today is a way that you can practice and solidify the correct fingering without making a bunch of mistakes on the way, along the way. All right, so the way we're going to do it is we're going to start with C and we're going to play hands together only until we reach a finger crossing. So we're going to start with C. We're going to play C, D, E, F. Okay, here's our first finger crossing. So notice in the right hand, we had to cross under to the thumb. So we're going to review those four notes over and over and over again until we solidify them. So C, D, E, right hand crosses under to F. Same thing again. C, D, E, just those four notes until that is really solid, until you feel really confident in making that finger crossing there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to keep going until we get to the next finger crossing. So let's see where that is. C, D, E, F, G, A. Okay, so this is the next one. So 
For this one, the left hand had to cross over onto finger three to the A. All right, so we're going to review just that much. So C, D, E, F, G, A. Same thing again. C, D, E, F, G, A. One more time. C, D, E, F, G, A. So I recommend reviewing just that much until you feel really confident in it. And then we're going to go until we get to the next finger crossing. So let's start at the beginning. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Here we go. So for C, notice our right hand thumb has to cross under. So let's practice just that much. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Same thing again. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And you would continue this all the way up. I'm just giving you a little demo, but then you would go to the next one. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. So D is the next one where the left hand crosses over onto finger four. And you would keep going all the way up, and I, I won't demonstrate that. But that's how, you, how I would recommend that you practice this so that you solidify the correct fingerings from the first time you practice so that you're not um, practicing mistakes and reinforcing those in your muscle memory. And then do the same thing on the way down. So you would start at the top. we we'll start with C, B, A. Our first finger crossing is the G here in the left hand. So then practice that. Practice just that much until you feel confident in that, and then go on. And our next one would be the right hand onto the E, so practice that. Until you feel confident in that. And then go on to the next one. And that would be the left hand thumb, and continue practicing that. So that's how you can practice and solidify the correct fingerings in your memory as you go on. And by the end of this, as you Continue practicing hands together. It should sound something like this. And that is a two octave scale in the key of C. So that is how you learn our first scale, which is the C scale. Now, the fun part is after you've done that, there are 11 more scales to learn. So um, you do not certainly have to learn them all right away. I would recommend maybe learning one every two to three weeks and just add, add one at a time um, as you go on. And as you feel confident in one, then start learning another one. Let me show you the order that I recommend learning the scales in, and then I will give you some resources to help you as you learn the scales. So the order I recommend learning the scales is actually um, comes from a musical, a music theory um, diagram called the circle of fifths. I won't explain much about the circle of fifths, but I do want to introduce it here. So basically the circle of fifths shows you the key signatures and keys. So you'll see in the middle here, we have, we can just ignore our minor keys for now because we're not talking about minor keys in this course. We're just talking about major keys. So you can see in this middle colorful circle here, here, you see all of our major keys. You see C, G, D, A, E, B, which is also C flat, um, F sharp, which is also G flat, D flat, which is also C sharp. Um, we don't usually refer to these two, so I'll cross those out for now. Uh, we have A flat, E flat, B flat, and F. So you can see our major keys are in the middle, and then outside of that, you see our key signatures. So for the key of C, you can see obviously our key signature here is right here. And you, you'll recognize that from our key signature flashcards. So you can see, if we just box this in here, you can see we have our major key of C and the corresponding key signature, which is no sharps and no flats. And then as you go around, you can see the other key signatures. So you see here we have the key of G, which has one sharp. You can see that there, the key of D has two sharps, uh, the key of A has three sharps, etc. all the way around. 
Now what I want you to see is this is called the circle of fifths. I'm going to write that here. I'm not sure why my, why my thing won't let me write. There we go. Okay, right here. Oh, actually, it ran out of the right side of the page. Okay, it was right at the top. Okay, so this is called the circle of fifths. The reason it is called the circle of fifths is that if you go to the right, you see this little arrow here. If you go to the right, starting with your C, the keys increase by fifths. So a fifth up from C is G. So the way we get that is this is the one, this is a second, third, fourth, fifth. So if you start at C and you go up a fifth, you get to G. So you see that's our next key, is the key of G. If you start at G and you go up a fifth, you get to D. If you start at D and you go up a fifth, you get to A. Let's come down here. If you start at A and you go up a fifth, you get to E. If you start at E and you go up a fifth, you get to B. If you start at B and you go up a fifth, in the key of B it would be one, two, three, four, five, you get to F sharp. Okay, let me come back down here. If you start at F sharp and you go up a fifth, one, two, three, four, five, I'm in the key of F sharp, so I'm tracing that scale, one, two, three, four, five, you get to D flat. If you start at D flat and you go up a fifth, one, two, three, four, five, you get to A flat. If you start at A flat, you go up a fifth, one, two, three, four, five, you get to E flat. Coming back down again, if you start at E flat and you go up a fifth, two, three, four, five, you get to B flat. If you start at B flat and you go up a fifth, one, two, three, four, five, you get to F. And if you start at F and you go up a fifth following the scale, one, two, three, four, five, you get back to C. So you can see how, why this is called the circle of fifths. Now the reason I wanted to introduce this today is only because this shows you kind of the recommended order for learning your scales. So you can see the key of C is the one we started with. The next easiest scale that I would recommend learning would be the G scale. So the G scale is right here. So I recommend learning that next. And then move your way around the circle of fifths in this direction. So we'll start with C and then G and then D, A, and E because each time you're just increasing the number of sharps. So you have one sharp here, let me write this here, you have one sharp and then you have two sharps, then you have three sharps, then you have four sharps, and then the key of B would have five sharps. All right, once you've gotten that far then you get into some harder key signatures, so then I would recommend going the other way. So then start up here at the key of F. The key of F has one flat, so learn that one. Um, the flat keys are harder than the sharp keys, by the way. Uh, the sharp keys, most of them use the exact same fingering that we just learned for the key of C, so that makes it a lot easier. The flat keys don't. The flat keys use different fingering for a lot of them. So you'll start with um, F and then just work your way around the circle of fifths this other way. So then key of B flat, which has two flats, the key of E flat, which has three, the key of A flat, which has four, and then you can tackle these tricky ones at the bottom. So this one has five and this one has six. And this can be either six sharps or six flats at the bottom here. So that's why I wanted to introduce the circle of fifths so you can kind of see how all these key signatures fit together. It's really cool. These aren't um, random. The, the notes, the keys, the chords, they're not random. They actually fit together um, very interestingly. This is part of music theory. Secondly, I want to show you um, where to find the fingering and other helps for learning your scales. So I have two options for you. One option is something I made, and you can see it in the uh, resources area below this video, and that is a scales chart. So I'm going to zoom up on it here so you can see. I show you in this chart every single scale and the fingering for every scale. You can see here, all the way down, we can go to the next page, and you'll see the last few scales on this page. So see these and these. They're all nicely color-coded so that it adds a little more interest. 
And you can see if we look at the C major scale, which we just learned, you'll see at the top of the scale it has the right hand fingering. So you can see exactly the way we played that. And then at the bottom of the little chart, you'll see the left hand fingering. So that will help you. Um, it also shows you clearly, let me go to a little easier one here. Let's go to the G scale. So like on the G scale, you can see clearly what notes we play. So you can see we play all white keys except for that F sharp. And that's the only black key we play. And so you can clearly see the fingering there. So that's a great way to learn it. So this is one resource. Again, that is in the resources area below this video. Another resource that you might find helpful is a scale book, and that is this one. It's the complete book of scales, chords, arpeggios, and cadences. Um, this is what you would use if you were going to be a professional pianist. Um, you learn all of these scales, all the different chords, cadences, everything like that, chord inversions, and this is published by Alfred. So this is a great resource. Again, there's a lot of information in it. Um, there's a lot of music theory at the beginning. It talks about the primary triads in the in all the keys. It talks about that at the beginning. It talks about a guide to fingering. And then it shows you, this is the C major scale. So it shows you exactly how you would play a two octave C major scale. And then it gives you some other resources as well if you're bored and want to practice more with your scales. It talks about playing your scales in contrary motion. So that's, instead of playing them parallel, which is like this, just like we learned, you would play it in contrary motion. Which is really fun to play as well. It's easier with the C scale, but with some of the other ones, it's a little more difficult. And then they talk about other more advanced topics, like how to play your scales in thirds and sixths. So if, you're, if you want to be a scale nerd, feel free to get this book and um, learn all of it. So it also talks about arpeggios, which we don't talk about in this course. Again, this is designed more for classical piano, and we are focusing more on worship piano, so there are a lot of skills um, that a lot of classical teachers would teach that I don't teach, at least not right away. That's why even scales, we waited until the early advanced course to learn scales, because they're not as necessary in worship piano, but at this point it's good to know your scales so that you are aware of um, the key signatures, the sharps and the flats, and it just helps your fluency and your overall technique at the piano. So this is the other book that I would recommend um, as an option, but you certainly don't, do not need to purchase it. Um, probably the most helpful resource to start with is the scale chart that I made and is in the resources area.